The current 5th generation aircraft are the most advanced, capable, and sophisticated weapon systems today. The US was the first to operate such an aircraft, with the F-22, and later the F-35 stealth fighter, but they are no longer alone. China has developed their own J-20, which is now operational, and Russia with their Su-57, which flew combat operations recently in Syria. With these aircraft out of the design phase and into production, you can guarantee these countries have already began work on the future generation of fighter, the so-called sixth generation. First, it's important to note that these numbered generations are pretty vague. There are no clear-cut criteria by which to classify aircraft, and the answers may vary depending on whom you ask. Some jets, like the Su-35 and the Super Hornet, are more capable than other 4th gen, but not quite 5th gen, and they're labeled 4.5 generation. But generally, earlier generations were distinguished between having radar, air-to-air -air missiles, multi-role capability, and increased maneuverability. 5th gen is often stated to have a large degree of all aspects stealth, including carrying weapons internally to maintain that stealth. Also, AESA or PAESA radars, which offer a significant increase in capabilities over mechanically scanned radars, and increased maneuverability and situational awareness. So with all that out of the way, what about the 6th generation? Well, looking backward, it would build upon previous generations, meaning that stealth will still be important, as well as maneuverability and being highly networked with surrounding assets. On top of that, future weapons, communications, and capabilities will be included. One area that has seen a huge investment in research and development in the 21st century is unmanned systems. There have been many discussions about the possibilities of a future 6th gen fighter being unmanned. Now the benefits of having an aircraft be unmanned are pretty clear. You aren't risking a highly trained pilot over enemy territory, either dying or being captured and used for propaganda purposes, which means it can fly more dangerous missions which may be too risky for an actual pilot. A computer-flown aircraft also doesn't get tired. It can fly extremely long missions and is ready to go at a moment's notice, anytime, any day, flying sortie after sortie after sortie. It also eliminates human error. It does not have to be paid or provided housing or fed. But there are also many downsides. One obvious one is technology limitations. This can include communications delays, its ability to perform complex aerial combat maneuvers in a dogfight, and also the risk of it being hijacked via a cyber attack. This is a major problem, which really became evident in 2011 when Iran was able to bring down an advanced US stealth drone, the RQ-170. Since there is no pilot on board, many aircraft require a data link back to its operators. This means that the drone is actively looking to accept orders. An enemy could send the drone false orders in order to take control of the craft. While actually taking full control of a drone is unlikely, the enemy could jam the drone's communications so that it cannot receive the correct orders. Many drones are designed to return to base if this happens, or loses communications. The enemy could then possibly spoof its GPS, making it think it's already back at base, causing it to land in the wrong location. One way of avoiding this is artificial intelligence, having an advanced computer system that can make decisions on the spot. It would be able to identify targets and possible threats, and then choose how to respond. This way, the drone is not relying on any external orders to perform tasks, which, as I mentioned, runs the risk of hacking, delays, or losing communications. While this level of technology may still be a few decades away, it's possible that the sixth generation will be unmanned. Along with unmanned, it's possible that these future fighters could be smaller and cheaper. The trend with jet fighters over the past 60 years has been that each generation has become much more expensive. Each generation has more advanced computers for navigation, flight control, weapons guidance, and much more. This along with the special composite materials has resulted in a massive increase in cost over the previous generation, resulting in less and less aircraft being procured. If this trend continues at a similar rate, 6th gen aircraft will cost half a billion dollars each. And with more powerful radars, like China's JY-26, and more advanced air defenses, like Russia's S-400, it is becoming increasingly risky and costly to carry out operations with even 5th generation aircraft. Laser air defense systems are beginning to be developed. Lasers travel at the speed of light, are much less expensive than missiles per shot, and do not require complex guidance systems to hit their targets. The US is currently working on the Indirect Fire's Protection Capability High Energy Laser, which will be operational in a few years. 
It is 10 times more powerful than the Laws laser that we saw a couple years ago deployed on the USS Ponce, and is able to shoot down incoming cruise missiles. Russia and China are also working on similar systems, and in the next few decades, laser air defense systems may be able to shoot down maneuvering aircraft. So a way of lessening the threat from these systems could be to build more, smaller, less expensive unmanned aircraft and carry out a sort of swarm attack on enemy interceptor aircraft and for strike missions against land targets. This way, losing a few aircraft to enemy air defenses would not be as costly, both in terms of money and loss of life. Speaking of lasers, a 6th generation fighter is likely to be armed with them themselves. Current laser weapons are large and require a lot of power, but technological innovations have decreased the size and weight to the point where they are able to be carried on an aircraft. There are two types of uses for these weapons. The first is defensive. The US is already designing and testing defensive lasers, which are designed to burn through and destroy enemy air-to-air -air and surface-to-air missiles that are fired at it. The Self-Protect High Energy Laser Demonstrator, or SHIELD, has already been tested. In April of 2019, it was reported to have successfully shot down multiple missiles in flight. This could be a revolutionary change in combat. Systems like the S-400 and even the advanced Chinese air-to-air -air missiles like the PL-15 would be virtually useless, as any missiles fired at the aircraft will be destroyed by the laser, that is, if everything works properly. I'm not going to get into details about the drawbacks and limitation of lasers, but bad weather could greatly diminish or even prevent operation of the laser. Offensive lasers, on the other hand, will require much more power. Shield is said to operate in the tens of kilowatts range. A land attack laser would greatly vary depending on the target, but would need to be many times more powerful. Aircraft and missiles are typically very lightly armored, as they need to be light enough to fly and be maneuverable. Ground targets do not. Lasers offer many advantages over bombs and air-to-ground missiles. They are virtually instantaneous, giving the enemy zero time to react, they can offer pinpoint accuracy, and an aircraft can carry thousands of shots, limited only by the power requirements, compared to only two to eight bombs. Lasers, however, will not completely replace bombs and missiles. Because their range is limited, things like adverse weather can affect its performance, and would have little to no effect against hardened targets, buildings, bunkers, and even possibly armored vehicles. So conventional weapons will continue to be used. Longer range, smarter, and even hypersonic weapons will likely be employed by 6th generation aircraft. We are seeing this trend now. Russia's 5th gen Su-57 launched multiple long range KH-59 cruise missiles in Syria in 2018. China's new air-to-air -air missile, the PL-15, has a range of over 300 kilometers. The US is working on the AIM-260 and the long-range engagement weapon, which will have longer ranges than the current AMRAAM, and Russia is developing longer-range air-to-air missiles. While long-range air intercept missiles are nothing new, the American AIM-54 Phoenix and the Soviet R-33 were operational 40 years ago, these were designed to shoot down large bombers with little to no ability to maneuver and dodge the missiles not quick, agile fighters. The PL-15 and the AIM-260 do offer that ability. A major part of 5th generation fighters is stealth. Stealth technology is a mix of techniques used to reduce the detection range of an aircraft, whether it be the shaping of the airframe or special composite materials to absorb the radar waves. The technology has really evolved since the days of the F-117. No longer is the US the only nation able to construct low observable aircraft. Russia, China, the UK, India, Turkey, and many more nations are currently building or already have operational stealth aircraft. The reason why more haven't built such aircraft isn't really because of the lack of knowledge, but due to a mixture of things. While you may have the technical know-how to build it, you may not have the manufacturing capability to do so. It is also extremely expensive to build the required materials, and operating and maintenance costs are much higher. The special coating and shaping also comes at a cost. The best shaping to not reflect radar signals is often not the best shape in terms of aerodynamics, so they may suffer somewhat in terms of maneuverability. Extra materials also adds weight to the aircraft, again affecting its maneuverability, range, and payload capability. Sixth generation aircraft will likely continue to utilize stealth technologies, but may not be as important as it is in the current generation. Instead, it may rely on a variety of other technologies to help it survive and carry out its mission, 
such as defensive technologies, like mentioned before, but also through various sensors and being networked in to other assets. A major change in capability came with the phased array radar. At first, these radars were huge, confined only to the role of large ground-based early warning radars. But over the years, they have been able to shrink down to the size that can fit on board an aircraft. There are two main types of phased array radars, active and passive electronically steered arrays, or AESA and PISA. I won't get into the detail of the differences between the two, but in general, phased arrays work by having thousands of individual tiny antennas, which the computer can activate and deactivate at will. By slightly adjusting the timing of emitting a pulse, it can direct the beam in whichever direction it wants. This compared to mechanically steered radars, which have to physically rotate or pivot to change directions. This allows phased array radars to scan any part of the sky almost instantaneously, simultaneously track dozens or even hundreds of targets, all while continuing to search for more targets. They also typically have greatly increased ranges over mechanical radars, it can be used as an electronic warfare tool, it is significantly less prone to jamming, as it's able to quickly change frequencies, and can also be used to communicate with friendly assets, able to send data, voice, even imagery. Phased array radars really are a major game changer in terms of sensors. Other sensors, such as synthetic aperture radar, powerful visual, infrared, and electro-optical cameras, able to search, detect, identify, and track targets both in the air and on the ground, and electronic warfare systems will certainly be included in 6th generation aircraft. The F-35, for example, has an EOTS, or Electro-Optical Targeting System. It provides high-resolution imagery and combines forward-looking infrared with infrared search and track, can be used as a laser rangefinder, laser designator, and laser spot tracker. It has an incredible range, able to identify targets nearly 100 kilometers away, like tanks, troop movements, aircraft parked at air bases, and much more. The system on the F-35 is based on the Sniper XR, which is a targeting pod loaded on a weapon station of 4th gen aircraft like the F-A-18. These pods take up a station, which could be used to carry another weapon or external fuel tank, and also, to a lesser extent, reduces maneuverability, range, and takes away from its stealthy characteristics. Having an EOTS built into the airframe eliminates this. Sixth generation aircraft are likely to continue this trend we've seen in terms of situational awareness. Being able to see what's going on around you for hundreds of kilometers. The ability to quickly identify threats and take the appropriate response. Beyond what is available today, artificial intelligence will likely become more integrated into this process, greatly increasing its capability. Having all this information is great, but you need to be able to share it. In the past, information such as the location of enemy aircraft had to be broadcasted over the radio. Pilots had to then form a mental picture from the information received, and reconnaissance systems like the F-14's TARPS had to bring back the film its camera captured to be developed and analyzed. Today, many advanced aircraft use data links, which send information digitally between aircraft, ground units, ships, and command. This gives each unit a much wider view of the battle space, all in real time. A fighter jet heading out to intercept enemy bombers can now see exactly where they are, even if they haven't detected them with their own radars. Where in the past, they had to wait for updates given over the radio by things like early warning radars or AWACS. This is something that will certainly be integrated into 6th generation aircraft. They will have a near complete view of anything and everything in the region. The information will even be precise enough to guide weapons, like air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missiles. The advantage of this is apparent, but it can also allow an aircraft to sneak up on an enemy without using its own radar, which would give away its position, and use the information provided by another allied unit to destroy it. And that's really the sum of the future 6th generation aircraft. An advanced aircraft able to detect enemies at extreme ranges, which is highly networked and armed with state-of-the-art weapons. On top of this, there will likely be new technologies to emerge that will be incorporated. While we are just now beginning to see 5th generation aircraft fully come into operational use, 6th gen is already on the drawing board. Competitions like the Joint Strike Fighter Program, where the X-32 and X-35 went head to head to become the US Air Force's next fighter, will likely begin in the 2020s, and a winner declared a few years after, followed by operational 6th gen aircraft in the late 30s to early 40s. 
The US is probably the loudest among the big three and the most public about future plans, quick to show off different designs, partly because they need to gain public and congressional approval to get funding. Russia has mentioned a few times its plan for sixth generation aircraft and China. China is the most secretive. In the last decade, China has gone from operating a majority of J7s, a third generation aircraft, to designing and producing their own fifth generation stealth fighter, the J20. With massive investment in technology and defense currently ongoing, China undoubtedly already has plans for its next fighter. Very little information gets out though, unless they want it to, but some photos, even some pins showing an unknown aircraft have been making their rounds on the internet. So while it seems the fifth generation has just finally arrived, the next generation is closer than you think. Before you go, I want to talk about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands upon thousands of classes and everything from design to business, technology, that helps you learn cutting edge skills. They virtually have everything. Learn video editing or entrepreneurship, tattooing, and much, much more. You get actual experts who work in the field to guide you through different courses, all at your own pace. They have recently introduced a groups feature, which allows members to connect with others in your field. These will teach you the skills needed to succeed in today's and in the future's economy, and could greatly help get you a career in a high paying job that you love. In some cases, those skills could be more valuable than having a college degree, and all for a tiny, tiny fraction of the price. With my link here, you will get two months free of unlimited classes. Sign up, try it out. If you don't like it, you can cancel it right after. But make sure you use my link here to get those two free months. And by doing so, you help support this channel. Go check them out. The link is in the description.